Training.com, CWI prep course. Come visit us at our website at train minus sign eng.com, pronounced training. This is our CWI prep course. This is a, as you go through some of these videos, these will be some snippets or samples out of our online training course. If you like what you see here in the sample section, come and visit us and take the course. Unlike a lot of other programs, we've got it set up so that you can do it a la carte. Um, if you only need, to, you know, we've got different parts of the CWI course broken out. So if you don't need to sit through and take safe practices for welding inspectors or you have some strengths that you know of and you want to streamline the process and only hit the sections where you don't really have a strong or strong background or a great deal of proficiency, our program is set up so you can take some of these parts of the CWI online course a la carte. Pick and choose, put together what you want. Leave the rest, like a Chinese food buffet. CWI prep course, Welding Safety and Hearing Conservation, Module 2, Part 6. Learning Objectives. Noise or Unwanted Sound. General Industry Standards 29 CFR 1910.95 Noise Induced Hearing Loss Noise Levels Noise Sources Potential Hazards and Hearing Conservation Noise and Its Effects Noise is defined as any undesirable sound even though it might be a meaningful one. The criterion of undesirability based on the capacity of the sound to disrupt communication or interference with other day-to-day -day activities. Some important characteristics of noise are intensity levels at the same intensity higher frequency noises are more irritating than lower frequency noises. Time and place of occurrence. Noise in open space is less annoys, annoying than in an enclosed space. And duration. Duration plays a direct role on the impact noise will have on employees. Noise levels. Um, the documents that control noise levels are General Industry Standards OSHA 29 CFR 1910.95, Safety and Health Regulations for Construction 1926.52, Occupational Safety and Noise Exposure. Noise or unwanted sound is one of the most pervasive occupational health problems. It is a byproduct of many industrial processes. Sound consists of pressure changes in a medium, usually air, caused by vibration or turbulence. <clears throat> These pressure changes produce waves emanating away from the turbulent or vibrating source. Exposure to high levels of noise causes hearing loss or may cause other harmful health effects as well. The extent of the damage depends primarily on the intensity of the noise and the duration of the exposure. Noise-induced hearing loss can be temporary or permanent. Temporary hearing loss results from short-term exposure to noise with normal hearing returning after a period of rest. Generally, prolonged exposure to high noise levels over a period of time gradually causes permanent damage. OSHA's Hearing Conservation Program is designed to protect workers with significant occupational noise exposures from hearing impairment even if they are subject to noise exposures over their entire working lifetimes. Here you can see different noise levels, um, typical weighted sound levels. Threshold of hearing is zero decibels um, at a thousand hertz. North rim of the Grand Canyon is 20. Soft whisper is at 2 meters is about 35 decibels. 50 decibels is an urban residence. Vacuum cleaner at 3 meters is about 70 some. Heavy truck at 15 meters is at 80. Jackhammer at 15 meters is 90 decibels. 110 meters at uh, 110 decibels is a discotheque. 125 is a jet takeoff at 100 meters, and 140 is the threshold of pain. So when people start throwing out decibels and sound levels, this is some 
gives you an idea of what some of the what some of the decibel numbers are attached to a typical sound. Mandatory hearing protection. It is mandatory to wear hearing protection devices when workers are exposed to 90 decibels or above for an eight hour shift, TWA. Workers have a standard threshold shift. That means your hearing shifts and you don't hear as well as you used to. Um, workers are exposed to 85 decibels above or above for more than six months until they receive their first audiogram. When it is inconvenient for mobile test vans to visit the work site more than once a year. So this is the times when mandatory hearing protection kicks in in the United States. As an inspector, some here's some of the sounds you may come across um, that are potential hazards. Some operations in welding and materials joining produce excessive noise, which may lead to hearing loss. Abrasive blasting, 105 to 112 decibels. Needle gunning, 113 decibels. Scaling, grinding is 108 to 110 decibels. Carbon arc gouging, 102 to 118 decibels. Pneumatic pumps, 100 decibels. High pressure steam cleaning, ventilation equipment, plasma arc cutting, engine driven generators, high frequency and induction welding power sources. So there's any number of things that can um, contribute to um, noise pollution or noise be a noise source that can be a potential hazard. So just be um, cognizant that there's a lot of things that produce noise and um, don't be afraid to ask questions or wear hearing protection. And generally it's a good idea to wear hearing protection. And a lot of places it's required depending on what the the noise level is. STS requirements, standard threshold shift. If standard threshold shift is work related, the employee is fitted for hearing protection and trained. Um, refitted and retrained if already wearing hearing protection and referred to audiological or otological exam if necessary and appropriate. Hearing protection shall be available to action level employees, shall be required for those employees exposed at or above 90 decibels, exposed at or above 85 decibels without an audiometric baseline, and those who have had a STS, a threshold shift. So this is when you're required to have it. So if you're down in the trenches, they got to make it available to you. They can't tell you, nope, sorry. And if the it's required, if it's you're exposed to anything above 90 decibels. So here are some examples of hearing protections. Earmuffs, earplugs, and canal caps. You can see the earmuffs. They're kind of old school looking, but they go on the outside. They're pretty solid, um, pretty good against most uh, noises earplugs and canal caps hearing protection it's provided at no cost to the employee they shouldn't they can't charge you for it um, there's a bunch of different types and brands there's more different types and brands of hearing protection than you can shake a stick at um, you know earmuffs semi inserts um, custom molded there's a whole slew of different options for hearing protection and sometimes they need to be replaced you know they get dirty munged up scuffed torn you know the foam ones you just throw away so there's a whole different um, bunch of types of these and you replace them when you need to hearing conservation programs strive to prevent initial occupational hearing loss preserve and protect remaining hearing and equip workers with the knowledge and hearing protection devices necessary to safeguard themselves employers are required to measure noise levels provide free annual hearing exams hearing protection and training and conduct evaluations of the adequacy of the hearing protectors in use unless changes made to tools, equipment, and schedules result in worker noise exposure levels that are less than 85 decibels. 
Research indicates that workplaces with appropriate and effective hearing conservation programs have higher levels of worker productivity and lower incidences of absenteeism. So they've crunched the numbers and basically if the place takes care of the noise, you're going to have a happier workforce, more productive, and a lot less absenteeism. And us as weld inspectors really don't have to worry about that, but it's just worth noting. Hearing loss is an irreversible condition that can be prevented. Hearing conservation programs can prevent hearing loss. In order for any hearing conservation to be successful, companies must locate all noise hazards, implement controls for those hazards, monitor the hearing of the employees, train the employees, keep records, and have a program administrator. Also, policies and procedures need to be written, and the whole program needs to be reviewed on an annual basis. Okay, what did we cover? Our learning objectives summary here. Um, we talked about noise or unwanted sound, general industry standards, 29 CFR 1910.95, noise-induced hearing loss, noise levels, noise sources, potential hazards, hearing conservation, and different types of hearing protection. Our CWI, CWE online part A video course, $149. It's um, self-study CWI exam. Everything's an online video course. We've got one section where it's questions, questions, and more questions. Um, we've got a whole number of CWI self-study question bank, 40 bucks. Come on in, take it, take a look, see. Um, if you just need questions, if you've sat through another course and you just want to keep hitting the material, check out our uh, question bank, 40 bucks.